Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, I've had Wither Skeleton Farms on my mind since building one in Minecraft SOS. But fortunately, here on the Minecraft Survival Guide, we actually have a really great place that we can potentially build a Wither Skeleton Farm. We're going to hop down here to the site of my original nether hub. We're going to navigate our way through the Basalt Delta and we're going to hit this tunnel and head out towards the nether portal I already made to the desert biome. But we are going to stop short of that because along the way we encounter this. This nether fortress in a soul sand valley biome is one of the ideal places to build a Wither Skeleton Farm. The other biome being a warped forest. And the reason that this is the ideal place for a Wither Skeleton farm, I mean, look at it. It's already spawning an absolute ton of mobs. And the reason for that is that the warped forest and soul sand valley biomes really don't spawn a great deal of other stuff. They nowhere near spawn enough mobs to take up the full hostile mob camp, which leaves a ton of room for nether fortress mobs to spawn. I mean, just look at this. Look at all of the wither skeletons just standing by that little area over there. Look at the amount of blazes currently attempting to set me on fire. So I've been coming here basically anytime I want to fight wither skeletons and get skulls, but I've been doing that very manually right now and in not so controlled conditions. And controlled conditions are really what we need in this place, because as you can see right now, it's absolute chaos anytime we try to come here. So in today's episode, not only are we going to reduce the spawning space in this nether fortress down to a very small controlled area, we're also going to make it a lot safer to travel to the desert. So the first thing I'm going to do is run home and get myself a bunch of fire resistance potions, which are the only way we're going to be able to deal with that amount of blaze fireballs. Fortunately for me, I already brewed up a bunch of those and left them in a fire resistance box here in my ender chest. So we have a ton of eight minute fire resistance potions. Those are going to come in very handy. The other thing I'm going to grab while I'm here at my storage room is a large amount of material that we can make into either buttons or slabs. And I'm going to recommend using wood for this, even though wood is going to potentially burn in the nether. The main reason I'm going to suggest using wood for this though is the fact that you can break down wood logs into four planks and there into four buttons or eight sets of slabs, meaning that you end up with a ton of material in just a single inventory. Once we've acquired all of that, we're going to return to the nether fortress, chug a fire resistance potion, turn a bunch of the wood into buttons, and from here we're going to start placing buttons on every available block in the fortress, starting with an area like this which is relatively inactive right now. Because I came from this direction, a lot of the mobs have spawned over there in the distance, and by placing buttons or slabs on the top surface of each of these blocks, what we are doing is spawn proofing them. We are making it impossible for hostile mobs to spawn on any of these blocks. The goal here is to slowly but surely eliminate all of the spawning spaces in the nether fortress so that it will only end up spawning mobs in one very specific area. And for that area, we're going to choose a crossroads much like this one. And if you're lucky, your nether fortress will have multiple of these in close range of each other, and that makes the ideal scenario for building a wither skeleton farm because each of these effectively has the largest structure bounding box of any structure inside the fortress. To properly explain that, I should probably explain something about these larger structures, because some of the smaller structures in the game, things like, you know, igloos and jungle temples, basically always generate the same. They can't generate with a great deal of variations to them, because they're relatively small structures, right? But when you've found multiple nether fortresses, you will find that no two fortresses really look alike. You know, they've got the same sets of rooms, but they're not ever an identical shape. They don't blend together in the same way every time. And that is because structures like nether fortresses, the same goes for strongholds and ancient cities and stuff like that, are all made out of these component structures, these sort of smaller elements which all come together to make up a larger thing. And so it will often be the case that you find a nether fortress that has multiple crossroads next to each other, but sometimes they won't generate next to each other because the interior segment of the fortress takes over there or some other kind of intersection gets in the way. The important thing to know about this is that each of these structures has its own individual bounding box. That is to say there's an invisible box drawn around each of these that determines the area in which very specific spawning conditions happen. And in this case, the spawning condition is, does this segment spawn nether fortress mobs or not? And the fun thing about nether fortresses is, is that if you place a nether brick block basically anywhere inside the larger bounding box of the entire structure, so take the maximum height, the maximum depth, and the maximum length 
and width of the fortress and place a nether brick block anywhere within that larger bounding box, you will get nether fortress mobs spawning on it. So you could place a block somewhere in the middle of this sky area here and just have a wither skeleton spawn up there because technically it becomes part of the nether fortress when you place nether bricks there. However, the cool thing about the individual structures like these crossroads, the individual components of a nether fortress, is that they have their own individual bounding box and inside that, it doesn't have to be nether bricks that the hostile mobs spawn on. You can have netherrack, you can have endstone, you can have anything that is a solid block that does not prevent mob spawns naturally, and the nether fortress mobs will end up spawning on it. And so that's going to be crucial to the design of this, because we are going to limit the amount of mobs that can spawn on an area while making sure that wither skeletons can still spawn. And we're going to do that using wither roses. Before we can even get to doing that part though, we do need to make sure that the rest of the fortress is spawn proofed, and I need to chug another fire resistance potion, because this explanation has taken me more than eight minutes to record. Fortunately though, despite being fireballed constantly throughout this process, as you can see, none of the buttons have really burned away yet. And the zombie piglins you see here have not spawned on this section, they've actually spawned further down and have walked down to this crossroads. So this crossroads is now virtually spawn proof and you're not going to find anything else generating over here. With the blazes neutralized, the only things we need to worry about in this nether fortress are skeletons, wither skeletons and magma cubes. You might also find that ghasts occasionally shoot you from the soul sand valley, but as long as you keep a keen eye out for each of those, this process should be relatively painless. Looking at the area that we've got here, we actually have an intersection there and there, which I think are going to be ideal for our Wither Skeleton farm. So this area here is going to be the area we're going to turn into the spawning platform for Wither Skeletons. So at this point, absolutely everything else is getting buttoned off, and that includes the two areas where in this fortress we have blaze spawners. One of those is up here, and you can choose for yourself whether you want to destroy the blaze spawner, whether you want to keep it to turn it into a blaze farm, or if destroying a mob spawner just feels like sacrilege to you and you don't want to do it. But the main thing to keep in mind is that if you're within 16 blocks of this when you use the Wither Skeleton Farm, the blazes are going to spawn and potentially cause a problem. There may also be nether fortresses elsewhere in your world where it's possible to get two blaze spawners in very close proximity, making a double blaze spawner farm very possible. But unfortunately, just buttoning the area around this blaze spawner is not going to be enough to prevent spawns because mob spawners actually spawn mobs in the air blocks around and they ignore the usual spawning requirements which mean that mobs normally have to spawn on top of a solid block. So once we've buttoned off the areas nearby, we're going to put as much distance between ourselves and the blaze spawner as we can and hopefully we won't have to come around this way again. After a while, you'll notice that some of the areas around you get fairly quiet in terms of mobs and you can work in relative peace as long as you've got your fire resistance re-upped for the blazes sniping you from a distance. And the reason behind that is really that the mobs around here have to spawn 23 blocks away from the player at a minimum. And after a while, these buttoned areas will take up a lot of that spawning space and the spawns will end up concentrated in this or that area. So there'll be quite a lot of stuff spawning in this central room or down that end of the fortress where you see the wither skeletons moving around because we haven't got to spawn proofing those areas yet. And that's why even though I intend to build the farm here, I'm still going to spawn proof this area with the two intersections because, to be quite honest, I don't really feel like coming back to all of the nether fortress mobs being concentrated in this one location. At least not until I've built the farm. We're going to have them all spawn there, but we want that to happen eventually, not right now. <laughs> anyway, that is my first salvo of buttons done. We've covered a pretty large area, but there is still lots more to do, so I'm going to run back for some more materials, and I'll meet you guys again once we've buttoned the entire area of this nether fortress. Okay, and not too long later, our nether fortress is entirely buttoned over. I'm not seeing any spaces left here where stuff can still spawn, which is probably actually why I'm still getting attacked by ghasts every so often and maybe having to repair the buttons here and there. But with the decrease in nether fortress spawns here, those spawns are going to be forced out into other areas, and that's going to include any areas of nether wastes terrain around here, and potentially even an increase in ghasts and skeletons spawning in the neighboring soul sand valley. But these last few zombie piglins are the only ones remaining from the few stragglers that spawned in this fortress initially, and for now, give or take a couple of blocks that might still be underneath some of these broken out sections, we really don't have any 
Nether Fortress spawns left. Which means we can get to work on converting these crossroads into our spawning platforms. And for that, we're going to need a bunch of surface that we can plant with a roses on. That can be soul soil, it can be netherrack, or it can be dirt variants brought here from the overworld, like grass. Of course, we are going to need a bunch of the wither roses themselves, but fortunately, there's a really helpful farm that's going to help us get a bunch of those in a short amount of time. First, we need to head back to this melon and pumpkin farm we've established in the overworld and grab a stack of pumpkins. Then we're going to find a convenient spot to place a single block. We're going to pillar up a couple of blocks and add a set of four blocks around the outside like so. We'll extract these two blocks from the middle, but leave that one stone block there. Then we're going to place two snow blocks. We're going to place a pumpkin on top of that and shear that to produce a snow golem. Then I need to make sure that I have a shovel that does not have silk touch because we need to acquire snowballs and silk touch will get us the snow layers that this snow golem produces. This shovel with efficiency three should do the trick and looking at the corner of this block here, we can simply hold down left click to shovel a whole bunch of snowballs, which will get us enough to craft a lot more snow blocks. Unfortunately, snowballs only stack to 16, so you're gonna have to clear your inventory to make a decent amount of them. And we wanna bring a few stacks of those with us to the end. And here in the end, one of the crucial things I forgot to mention is that we're going to need enough supplies to spawn the wither, because of course the wither is necessary to generate wither roses. So I had to go and unbutton some of the nether fortress so we could generate a few more wither skeleton skulls and get enough to spawn the wither. But we're going to be doing that underneath the central end portal here because that's a safe space that we can spawn the wither and do a bunch of stuff around it without it getting free and trying to kill us. I'm actually going to gather up a bunch of end stone right here so that we can plug up some of the area underneath the end portal where I've widened it out to make space for our wither killing chamber because we ideally want to make this as small a space as possible while still being able to spawn the wither here in our obsidian t-shape in the center. So I'm going to fill in some of these corners and back walls. Bearing in mind that once the wither generates, it probably generates on this block here and is probably going to destroy a few of the blocks around it initially. We're going to leave one corner over here open and this is where we're going to be generating a bunch of snow golems. But I'm going to be closing off the rest of this for now and if we need access to the farm, we can drop down this hole and get in and out of the space that way. Reaching into my ender chest, I'm going to grab a couple of things from the redstone box and I'll also need a bunch of iron from the beacon box in this case so we can make some shears. We're going to lay out a stack or two of pumpkins on the ground and we're going to carve all of these pumpkins so that they become viable to create snow golems. Of course doing this is going to create an awful amount of pumpkin seeds. We're just going to let those despawn since we don't need to do anything with them. Then we're going to return to the redstone box here and grab two redstone dust, an observer and two dispensers. Leaving a two block gap for a snow golem to generate down here we're going to remove this block and replace it with one of those dispensers into which we're going to put all of the sets of shears we just crafted. We're also going to have an observer facing in that way and another dispenser on the top here. That dispenser is going to be filled with all of the carved pumpkins we just generated. And now we're simply going to look at this block here in front of the dispenser and place two snow blocks. What's just happened there is that we've created a snow golem thanks to the carved pumpkin being placed on top of the two snow blocks by a dispenser. But on the way down, the snow golem that's generated gets sheared by this bottom dispenser and that removes the carved pumpkin again, leaving you with this face made out of coal. The snow golem will then move on into the area underneath the portal where it's going to be killed by the wither, generating a wither rose every time one is killed. This will also generate a lot of snowballs because this area is going to constantly be exploded by the wither and so lots of snowballs are going to drop around here as the snow golems move over the terrain and generate snow layers. But the best part is with the explosive projectiles of the wither contained within the bedrock here, the wither roses that drop from the snow golems are not in danger of being destroyed. And it's actually fairly safe for the player to walk around in here and collect them. So I'm going to dig out the T-shape of obsidian right there to make sure that I know where it is because we don't want to end up misplacing this wither by mistake. But we are going to summon the wither right here and probably run away quite quickly so we don't end up getting caught up in the explosion. The only other problem is we've got to make sure there aren't any other blocks in the range of the T-shape of the wither, but then we should be able to do this. There we go, now the wither is spawned, we can get on out of here, and those two snow golems are not long for this world. Another quick word of advice, you're probably going to want to turn your mob sounds down for this one because it's going to get very noisy inside this farm and you're going to be standing relatively close to it. But now, all we should need to do is stand here, continuously placing these two snow blocks and the majority of those carved pumpkins are going to be returned to us, allowing us to put them back into the dispenser later. As you'll be able to see in the subtitles there, a bunch of snow golems are now dying underneath the portal and they're going to be pushed into that space by the other snow golems continuing to generate here. Now this isn't quite the setup 
for this farm where you can stand here and hold right click. I am having to place these two blocks deliberately each time. But if you want a better version of these farm where some of these problems are dealt with more elegantly, check out Ian X04's video on this farm. It's a really great explanation of the farm and where I first discovered its potential. Now eventually you are just going to run out of either snow or carved pumpkins. If you end up with carved pumpkins dropped on the surface here, you can replace them in the dispenser and we might end up having to go down here to reclaim the rest of them. But as we walk into this space, we'll be able to run around, pick up a bunch of snowballs and there'll be some wither roses here as well. So we'll drop a couple of stacks of snowballs and create fresh stacks of wither roses in my inventory so I can make sure I can collect everything. And as you can see, it's pretty safe to walk around the wither without taking any damage. While you're down here, you'll want to craft a bunch of these snowballs back into snow blocks, leaving space in your inventory for those. And the only thing you need to be cautious of is that you do this quickly enough that the wither's health bar doesn't just deplete from its suffocating in bedrock. But where it is right now, it really can't hurt us at all. There we go, just from grabbing all of the snowballs that were down there, I've actually been able to craft more snow blocks than I came here with. I came here with three stacks, I now have about six. So the snow really is going to multiply from this farm, and you should be able to retain the same amount of carved pumpkins here for the dispenser. And so the cycle continues with us building up with the roses, and we're going to need a few stacks of them in order to completely fill a couple of platforms in the nether. So I'm going to grab as many of these as I feel like grabbing right now, and I'll meet you back in the nether for part three. Back in the nether, we've returned to the site of our wither skeleton farm. These two crossroads are going to form the foundation of a platform which will ultimately end up spawning a lot of wither skeletons. I brought a bunch of netherrack with me and I have the wither roses stored in a shulker box inside my ender chest here, along with a bunch of the snow blocks which we're keeping for a future project. So the goal now is to create a platform at the lowest part of the spawning bounding box for this section of the nether fortress, which happens to be just over halfway along this pillar section and right where the pillar section narrows out. This is basically the lowest block on which wither skeletons will spawn if you place a non nether brick block in this area. We are going to connect that to this leg of the nether fortress over here and fill the entire thing in. Of course we're going to remove the blocks of the nether fortress here as well and this nether brick here is going to have to go and be replaced by netherrack so that we can plant the wither roses on it. We're going to create multiple spawning platforms for this farm just to optimize the amount of wither skeletons that we can potentially generate here and the next platform will need to start three blocks up so we'll count one, two, three. The next platform is going to be there, and we should be able to fit another platform three blocks above that one. Of course, if you want to scale down the farm a bit, as long as you have spawning conditions like this where there are very few other biomes around, besides Soul Sand Valley or Warped Forest, and if you're willing to do a little extra spawn proofing, you'll be able to get pretty decent rates for a single player project out of just one platform and possibly even just one crossroad. In fact, I'm not entirely confident that a full shulker box of Wither Roses is going to fill more than two platforms of this, so we're going to focus on getting two platforms set up, and once we're farming skeletons, maybe I'll come in and add a third platform later. The other thing to bear in mind is that making this entire platform out of netherrack is going to leave you very vulnerable to ghast attacks. The real test of whether or not this platform is built at the correct height is whether or not you find nether fortress mobs spawning on it. And as you can see, these blazes have spawned on it while I was briefly away from the platform, so that pretty much guarantees we're getting what we want out of it. And there are some wither skeletons already down here, which is perfect because I want to swipe at a couple of these to see if we can get some more skulls in case I need to spawn another wither and generate some more wither roses. And yeah, judging by the amount of netherrack I brought with me and the amount I now have left, we'll probably need a full shulker box of wither roses to cover two platforms. But with all the nether bricks we've just collected, I'm going to turn a bunch of that into slabs. We're also going to use slabs of mangrove wood if we need to. And one and a half blocks up from the platform, we're going to create a row of slabs here that's designed to keep any mobs inside the farm and give us something that we can run around the outside on. Making sure that these are bottom half slabs, of course, so that nothing is going to spawn on them and we don't need to spawn proof them with buttons. I'm going to turn a bunch of the mangrove logs into planks, break those down into slabs, and create another row of slabs over the top of this one. And eventually this will just be a cool decorative touch to the farm, but for now, running around on top of these mangrove slabs will prevent any of the wither skeletons from reaching us if they spawn inside here. Which they are likely to do soon, because our next move is going to be to place all of the wither roses that we've gathered on this platform. This will need to be done very carefully and systematically, both to make sure that you don't take too much damage from the wither roses, and to make sure that there are no gaps in the wither roses where other mobs could spawn. But 
you'll find that the Wither Roses will even kill the zombie piglins that wander into this area, and they won't really do anything to stop that from happening, so you can say goodbye to other mobs in this area for now. And if you want to spawn Wither Skeletons on this platform in the meantime, just make sure to create three block high areas so that the two and a half block tall Wither Skeletons can spawn in here. And if you're playing with fire spread on, which I haven't for a while, keep in mind <laughs> that flowers can burn, and so can any wood blocks that you place around here. And if that small fire means that I need to go and get more Wither Roses because I don't have enough for a second platform, I'm going to be so annoyed. But right now, if all we wanted to do was create a manually farmed area for Wither Skeleton spawning, this would be a pretty good one. <laughs> because as we will find as we dig our way around this area, is we've got a pretty decent amount of Wither Skeletons spawning here already. And as we circle the platform like this, we leave spawning spaces in the distance open to generate so that when we come back, we have a decent amount of Wither Skeletons just waiting to be attacked. Now, unfortunately, they are going to jump a little bit as we hit them, so there's a chance that some of them can sort of leap up and hit us with the knockback from the sword. But that's generated a handful of drops down there. There's coal and bones and everything. Now, unfortunately, we are a little bit close to the blaze spawner that we noted earlier, and that's going to cause problems if it starts more fires in the farm. So we're going to go and deal with that real quick. Having drunk a fire resistance potion, I'm going to approach the spawner from this side, deal with any blazes that spawn in the meantime, and we're going to create a 9x9x3 nine by nine by area of full blocks centered on the spawner. We're going to totally cover the top of that with slabs or buttons as well, and that's effectively going to block any potential spawnable spaces that the spawner could use to create a blaze. And that should prevent the spawner causing any more trouble from that point onwards. Now if I fly away from our Wither Skeleton spawning platform, try and despawn a bunch of the other stuff that might have generated in the nearby area, and then approach that Wither Skeleton spawning platform again, we can now see that a ton of Wither Skellies have spawned in this area, and it's just about despawning the mobs in the surrounding biomes and allowing more spawning spaces to become available in here. Just look at the massive pack of wither skeletons we've been able to generate. And if I'm standing back here in the corner, I don't think they'll be able to hit me. That is an absolute ton of wither skeletons that we've just disposed of. And unfortunately, we're disposing of the drops right now as well, both because I don't really feel like dipping down into the wither roses to get them and because some of them are going over the edge into lava. But the key to these types of wither skeleton farms is not just to leave this big open spawning platform and try and hack at the skellies from the sides. We're going to create an area in the middle of the farm that the wither skeletons are drawn towards. And for that, we're going to need to capture some piglins. Fortunately for me, even with the wither skeletons spawning in large numbers here in the Soul Sand Valley, there are some nearby biomes which are not part of the Soul Sand Valley. In particular, up here, we should have some piglins spawning as a result of there being a nether wastes biome. And there we are, down there there's a whole pack of piglins. Right now the piglins are going to be aggressive towards me because I'm not wearing gold, but that affords me the opportunity to trap a couple of them in boats, making sure that they don't despawn and saving them for later. Because if you haven't seen this in action already, piglins and wither skeletons will actually fight each other. They will become aggressive towards each other if they're in the same area. And so we can use piglins trapped in the center of the farm to lure the wither skeletons in towards the middle, where they will drop down into a killing mechanism that we'll set up with the player at the bottom with a looting three sword attacking them for all of the drops. Each of these piglins is going to be positioned in the center of one of these crossroads, since that's what we've centered the spawning pad here on. And before we work on the next layer of the farm, we should really figure out where the wither skeletons are going to go, otherwise we'll be retrofitting a killing area onto something that's already producing a ton of hostile mobs. Unfortunately for me, the area directly underneath these crossroads is a lava lake, so I'll have to bust out a few more fire resistance potions and create a perimeter where we can drain the lava, allowing us to operate in relative safety. But this has been a lot of work, and there's still a lot of work left to be done before we can turn this thing into an absolute with a skeleton powerhouse. So for now, we are going to leave this episode here. But folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. There will be a follow-up episode where we complete this farm and you folks will really enjoy what it can do at full capacity. But thank you so much for watching this episode. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.